So what's it like to buy your first cryptocurrency on Kraken? Well, let's say I'm at a food truck I've never tried before. Am I going to go all in on the loaded taco? No, sir. I'm keeping it simple, starting small. That's trading on Kraken. Pick from over 190 assets and start with the 10 bucks in your pocket. Easy. Go to Kraken.com and see what crypto can be. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Interactive Inc., PWI, DBA Kraken. View PWI's disclosures at Kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures. Monday Matinee, your weekly series of live plays, classic drama and comedy, and a variety of audio drama from the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Come quickly, it's happening again. Riley, where are you? It's here. Do you understand me? It's here. Riley, I need your help getting down the stairs. Damn this chair. Riley, do you hear me? Quickly before. No, it can't. It can't be. Stay away. Stay away. Don't you come near me. Leave me alone. Riley. Riley. Riley, I can see it. He's coming after me. He's... He's... Stop it, damn you! Help me, Riley! Help me! Oh, God! He's pushing me toward the... Signal Audio Drama presents The Waverly House Haunting by Robert Arnold, Part 1. Here it is. Oh, my God. The inside is even nicer than the outside. <laughs> what are you acting so impressed for? You grew up rich. Still, this may be the nicest house I've ever seen. Oh, yeah? What do you say we make it the nicest house you've ever had a screaming orgasm in? I will put your things in one of the upstairs guest rooms, Miss Andrea. Thank you, Riley. And as for you... I'm glad to know that the loss of your father hasn't put a damper on your libido. Oh, what? I have to be sad now? Not a word between us in ten years, but I have to be sad? You could try. Shit. No way. I'm thankful. Dying was the nicest thing that man ever did for me. I know it may feel that way now, Peter, but when you eventually slow down and take stock, oh my lord in heaven, will you look at that chandelier? (laughs) Yeah. Italian glass, brought over from Europe by boat. Priceless and irreplaceable, blah, blah, blah. And are these the stairs? Are you serious? What do they look like? I mean, are they the stairs? The ones he fell down? Oh, yeah. Happened right here. Splat. So sad. 
But, wow, these portraits are incredible. Are these all family? Yep. All dearly departed members of the Waverly clan. That fourth one's dad. Our first image is a painting of Mr. Dipshit Waverly. He's holding that book to look smart, but check out the blank expression. He's not fooling anyone. Next to him, we have the esteemed Sir Bowlcut Waverly. <laughs> so accomplished, so successful, yet clearly let his mother cut his hair. Looking good, Bowlcut. And this handsome gentleman is Pervy Pete. See that weird little smile? You just know this guy was drilling holes in the bathroom walls of this place. <laughs> when was the house built? Late 19th century, I think. It's been in the family ever since. And has claimed each of its patriarchs in turn. Riley, hey, didn't hear you come back. Is that true? All the Waverly men have, have died here? It's quite true, Miss Andrea. Of course, it's nothing so remarkable. This was their home, after all. It is rather common to pass away in one's own home. We must depart for the service in about two hours, sir. Great. Just enough time to get a buzz on. What do you say, my dear? Pretty sure I still remember how to find the wine cellar. Peter, I don't know. Please, darling, it's... It's my way of grieving. Asshole. Fine. Lead the way. Hello? Is... is someone there? Hey, Riley. Ah, Miss Andrea. Oh, come, come in, come in. Is Mr. Peter getting ready? He's, um, napping. Are you setting up for dinner? That's right, miss. Half a dozen guests will dine at Waverly House after the service. Mostly family. I am sure they will be quite eager to meet you. And you're doing all of it yourself? The cooking, the serving, everything? I am afraid so. For many years now, the elder Mr. Waverley has been the only occupant of Waverley House. There has not been a need for a larger staff in quite some time. Still, that's a lot of work. And this is like a full formal dinner, right? Six courses, Miss Andrea, including hors d'oeuvres, soup, and fish. Riley, can I ask you a stupid question? Miss Andrea... I genuinely believe that the only stupid questions are the ones we are too ashamed to ask. Please. Okay. Can you tell me about... forks? Forks, miss? Wow. That was even stupider than I expected. I mean at dinner. Which fork to use when, that kind of thing? Ah, is miss feeling a bit rusty in her table manners? You could say that. I suppose it has been a few years since Cotillion. Oh, no, I'm not even Catholic. But can I be honest with you? I'm maybe not quite as well off as Peter thinks I am. Indeed? In fact, you could say I'm more or less broke. Indeed. Or if you really wanted to get into it, you could say, for example, that I've spent the last three years sleeping on a mattress I bought for 25 bucks at a police auction. Oh, dear. And our Mr. Peter is unaware of these circumstances? So far, anyway. Believe me, it hasn't been easy keeping up appearances these last couple of months. But I don't think he ever would have proposed if he had known the truth. I see. So anyway, tonight will be my first formal dinner, and I want to get everything right. But surely Mr. Peter has taken you dining in the course of your courtship? Oh, he has. But these trendy East Coast places make it easy to get by, you know? When dinner is three globs served on a tree branch, nobody knows what's proper. I see. Well, then, you may consider me your enthusiastic confederate. I shall be happy to assist you in any way I can. Great. Thank you. What if I wash these for you and you tell me what they are? A generous offer, Miss Andrea. But though Mr. Waverley may be gone, for the time being, this house will continue to operate under his rules, and he simply would not have allowed any guests of his to sully her hands working in the kitchen. You're saying you don't need the help? 
quite the opposite, actually. There is a great deal left to be done. Well then, I guess we'll each have a little secret to keep, won't we? Very well. That is a salad fork. You'll note that it is somewhat square-shaped, with tines that taper slightly. It will be the middle of the three forks arranged on the left side of the table setting. Now, despite what you may expect, the salad course is actually served forth. Immediately prior comes the fish course. That fork is a fish fork. As you can see, it is slightly longer with a straighter head. Amen. And now I would like to invite William's son and my own distant cousin, Mr. Peter Waverley, to say a few words about his father. Peter? Thanks, Doug. Uh, I mean, Reverend. <laughs> he was always just Doug when we were growing up. I'm, I'm still not used to it. <clears throat> In thinking about my father... One story keeps coming back to me. I feel like it sums him up pretty well. One day I came home from seventh grade and told him I wanted to join the AV club at school. They'd gotten these kits to build their own microphones that really worked, like you could plug them in and use them to record stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. And anyway, harmless, right? Well, when I suggested this to my father, he just looked at me with such contempt in his eyes, just utter disgust. He didn't have to say a word. I was absolutely humiliated. He told me I only had so much time for extracurriculars and that I needed to budget that time intelligently. Then he said that Waverly men played sports, and that he didn't care which sport I picked, but that if I wanted to be a man, I would pick one, and I would focus on that. I picked tennis. My mother hired me a private coach, and I practiced all summer. That was exhausting. All those drills, all that footwork, while my friends were off recording things with their microphones or doing whatever else. And when my first tournament rolled around and I walked onto the court for my very first match, I looked out into the crowd and there was my mother smiling and waving. And there was Riley, our manservant, who's always been like family. And Riley's wife, Judith, our housekeeper at the time. She was like family, too, when she was alive. And that was it. Those were the only faces I recognized. My father, after forcing me to miss out on something that genuinely interested me, to take up a sport I didn't even like, to play in a tournament I was dreading, after all that, he didn't even bother to show up. I played tennis for another 10 years. And eventually I got pretty good. I always wondered whether if I got good enough, whether maybe one day dad would come out and watch me play. But he never did. William Waverly was a cruel, cold man. He was born into money, and he turned it into more money. And that's really the nicest thing you can say about him. I'm sorry you came all this way to hear that, to celebrate him. He wouldn't have appreciated it anyway. But hey... Stick around for the reception. I hear it's going to be pretty lavish. Anyway, it ought to be. I mean, there's no way in hell I'm getting any inheritance, so all that money has to go somewhere. 
Well, that's it, I guess. Uh, back to you, Reverend. <clears throat> Let us pray. The boy damn near drove that old truck off the cliff and nearly drove both of us along with it. <laughs> <laughs> he was an old hellraiser, William was. I wish you all could have seen him back then. It's difficult to imagine, Mr. Morton, having known Mr. Waverley only later when he was far more austere. May I refresh your tea, Mr. Morton? Oh, thank you, Riley. It was a lovely service, Reverend. I'm glad you found it so, Andrea. I'm afraid I can only count Mr. Waverley as a distant relative. A second cousin once removed, I believe we decided. Still, I was honored to be asked to commemorate his life in that way. Oh, please don't be modest, Reverend. You're just as much a member of this family as any of the rest of us. That's kind of you to say, Alice. It wasn't a compliment, Doug. Peter, you are too grown up for me to scold you. But your eulogy was just abominable. Thank you, Aunt Alice. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sounds like someone has a few unresolved daddy issues. Oh, shut up, Jeremy. Do not tell me to shut up. Mother! Quiet! Both of you! This is a solemn occasion. The, um, the soup is delicious, Riley. Thank you, Miss Andrea. The squash came directly from the Waverly House garden. Ladies and gentlemen, the fish course will be a baked halibut. The fish course. Fish. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Riley. Poor fellow seems to be losing his senses, repeating himself like that. Who's ready for another bottle of wine? You are the only one drinking, Peter. Well, then I am the only one who gets a vote, and that means it's unanimous. So how about it, Riley? Some more of the really good stuff? Of course, sir. Andrea, Peter tells me you're an attorney. Is that so? What type of law? Well, I'm just getting started, really. Right now, I'm a junior associate at Evans Glasner. Evans Glasner? That's a good firm. Bunch of sharks, though. I hope you're ready to swim with them. <laughs> Andrea could eat every single one of them alive. Call it her fish course. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest, though, it's quite a bit of work at the moment. Keeps me away from home more than I would like. Well, hang in there. It'll steady out eventually. You're young yet. Still paying your dues. And my student loans. <laughs> Speaking of schooling, Jeremy has re-enrolled at Benson, you know. This time he's studying linguistics. Is that so? How interesting. Here you are, sir. Mother, I don't care for halibut, do I? At least try it, dear. Riley was kind enough to make it for you. And what will you do with a degree in linguistics, Jeremy? Oh, I don't know. Write a few papers, probably. Go abroad for a while. Learn to be lame in other languages. Peter. The only lame one in here is you, you old drunk. I guess we can all see why Uncle William cut you out of his will. That's enough, Jeremy. Don't listen to him, Peter. He's just overly excited. No, it's okay. He's right. I'm under no delusions. Andrea, darling, once we blow through the nest egg, Mom left me. I guess we'll just have to leech off of your side of the family. <coughs> Sounds good. Your wine, Mr. Peter. Fill her up. The fish is excellent, Riley. Thank you, Reverend. Speaking of the estate, Mr. Morton, when should we expect a reading of the will? But he's not cold yet, Aunt Alice. Oh, we won't be having one. And why is that? You are the executor, are you not? Yes, yes, but... A formal will reading is largely an invention of the cinema. There's no need to stand on such ceremony. My office will mail each of you a copy of the will first thing Monday morning. Well, I suppose that's all fine and proper, but I haven't the slightest idea why we should wait days for the thing to make its way through the mail when the remaining family is all seated around this table. Can't you simply tell us what it says? Well, uh... 
I wouldn't want to try reciting it from memory, of course. But I suppose I could send someone to the office for a copy if you don't mind waiting. Not a bit. It would be a fitting end to this day of remembrance for my dear brother. Love him and loot him, am I right? Peter, please. I'll drink to that. All right, then. Sit tight. I'll put in a call. in an equal manner, such that each organization receives one-fifth of the value of the securities upon their sale. Coffee, Ms. Alice? Yes, thank you, Riley. None for Jeremy, I'm afraid. Even decaffeinated keeps him up. For his care in coordinating my funerary arrangements, and for his generosity in agreeing to commemorate my life at my passing, I do hereby give, devise, and bequeath to the Reverend Douglas James Harold, the sum of $25,000, as well as the two antique Chinese vases located in the lower study of Waverly House with the identification numbers, and he lists the numbers. You know the ones he's talking about, Riley? I do, Mr. Morton. They are quite beautiful and quite valuable. A most generous gesture. I am sure the church will be pleased. A dispensation to the reverend? Why, that man can hardly even be counted as a member of this family. Not to worry, Mother. Waverly House is still unaccounted for. Coffee, Mr. Peter? No, I'm okay. Peter, maybe you should have a little. I'm okay. Finally, regarding Waverly House. The home and its grounds have been the pride of this family for more than 120 years. In its 88 rooms have unfolded the most memorable moments of my life. Above all else, it is imperative for me to leave Waverly House in the care of a family member who will cherish it and maintain it as I have. Well said, my dear brother. Or we could just burn it down. Shush. With that in mind, I hereby give, devise, and bequeath all of the right, title, and interest in and to the real estate located at 100 Monument Avenue, known as Waverly House, as well as a dedicated fund to maintain its ongoing operations. Well? <clears throat> as well as a dedicated fund to maintain its ongoing operations to my son, Peter Donovan Waverly. Oh. <gasps> what? Mother, mother, you said he was cut out. You said... This is an outrage, an absolute affront. I demand to see that document at once. Oh, oh my God, Peter. This is your house. What was that? Mr. Morton, I must register my deepest protest. My brother was clearly not in his right mind when this document was written. Let's all try to stay calm, Alice. He dictated the will directly to me, Alice, and he was clear as a bell when he did it. Well, I won't stand for it. I'll sue. Jeremy and I will take the lot of you to court. If you like. It won't do anything except put you on the hook for legal fees. The paperwork is all very clear. Mother, what was that sound? I simply don't understand how this could have happened. Oh, William, what were you thinking? Well, after all, Alice, Peter is his son. Even a prodigal son can come home again. Hogwash! Peter, do you hear that? Mother? For God's sake, it's the storm, Jeremy. Now listen here, Mr. Morton. You may think... Oh. Good heavens, the door... Riley, there's no one else in this house, is there? Of course not, Mr. Morton. Mother, I feel cold. Oh, will you all please stick to the matter at hand and stop worrying about some silly door? The wind blew it open, that's all. That's not an outside door, Aunt Alice. There is no wind.
Did you hear that? Mother! God be with us. What? What is this? Is this somebody's attempt at a prank? If so, it is decidedly unamusing. Peter, what's going on? I don't know. Who is that speaking? Jeremy, sit down. Answer me. I demand to know who you are. Jeremy! We will not get out. You are the one who is trespassing here. We are the Waverly family, and we have every right to... Jeremy! Oh, help! Let go of me! Let go, mother! Mother, help me! Oh, my God! Jeremy, hold on. Peter, follow him. Go! What the hell? What's pulling him? He's moving so fast. He's headed toward the foyer. He's... he's... What happened? Where'd he go? Jeremy! Jeremy! Oh, God. Peter, up there. Up by the chandelier. Help me! Holy Christ! Jeremy, get down from there! He's... he's floating! How is he doing that? You heard that, right? I did, and we're both fucking crazy. Peter? Peter, I don't know what's going on here, but maybe we should- Hey! Hey! Are you listening to me, you invisible jackass? That little worm you're holding in midair? That is my cousin! Now, I can shit-talk him all I want, because he and I are family. Not helping. I don't know who you are, but you don't have the same goddamn privileges. So you put him down. Now! (laughs) Shit. Quick, get underneath him. Get it! Oh! Oh. 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 Ow. Fuck. (laughs) Everybody in one piece? I was in the air. I was I was in the air. Yeah, yeah. We saw you. Jeremy. Jeremy, darling. Are you hurt? Mother, it tried to kill me. This damned house tried to kill me. That was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Thank God everyone is all right. Are you all right, Miss Andrea? I'm fine, Riley. Jeremy got tossed around a bit, but we were able to break his fall. Mr. Peter? Sir? Huh? What? Are you all right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. It's just... What the hell was that? Part 1 of The Waverly House Haunting was written by Robert Arnold and featured the voices of Jim Palmer as William, Robert Arnold as Peter, Emily Draffin as Andrea, John W. Sparks as Riley, Zach Williams as the Reverend, Bill Andrews as Morton, Jude Knight as Aunt Alice, Justin Willingham as Jeremy, and Chris Jowers as The Spirit. Original score by Eric Jorgensen. Sound effects by Robert Arnold and Karen Strawn, with additional sounds from freesound.org. Special thanks to Julia Hinson, 
Marcus Brown, Leslie Barker, and Aliza Moran. Assistant directed by Karen Strawn. Produced and directed by Robert Arnold. This is your announcer, Jenry Toll. To learn more about Spoken Signal audio drama, hear our other productions, and get in touch, visit us at SpokenSignal.com. Thank you for listening to Monday Matinee right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Tuesday Terrors for Horror, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Thursday Thrillers for Action, Adventure, Mystery, and Crime Drama, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases for the week from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.